And in entertainment, the Lagos State Film and Video Census Board has issued a 30-day notice on content producers in Nigeria to duly register their content with the body. The board executive secretary, Mr. Bami Dele Balogu, gave the notice while unveiling a platform by the Performing Musicians Employers Association P-Man and Lafrique Promedia to track and generate revenue for the entertainers. The board will advise practitioners involved in production, sale, distribution of audio and visual product to register the product through the board's authorized agent within 30 days. Balogun said violators of the registration would face severe sanctions by the board, calling for the cooperation of stakeholders to achieve this goal. And now to take a look at this, uh, joining us is Emeka Umba, media consultant. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on Thank the program. You, now, some could argue that uh, this new tax uh, is against the youth, as uh, most youth uh, uh, produce media content. Uh, what would you say about that? I think, I think that um, it's not well thought out. Um, I, I mean, just you know, listening to, 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 to what you just said, it sounds to me like this is basically a revenue-driven idea um, by, the, by the agency of government. They think that because there's a lot of people making, creating content, that therefore there's an opportunity for them um, to make money off it. Uh, and I think it's just, it's not well thought out. Uh, the first thing should be, you know, how do I help people to grow? How do I make the industry prosper? And then, you know, on top of that, then you can hope that when businesses, when young people are making a living, um, thousands of them in Lagos, because Lagos is this hub of, of economic activity, and not just economic activity, of content activity um, in Nigeria. And so if, if the industry starts to flourish, then obviously more people will pay you tax. Um, you know, there'll be more economic activity, there'll be more spend, there'll be more um, p uh, uh, disposable income to spend in Lagos. So you can make money off that. But to the, the idea that, uh, you know, f off the bat, um, you start tasking, you know, levying a tax on people, I mean, it's, it's not, it's... it's and we know this is a time yeah. of uh, global economic hardship. It's yeah. COVID-19, lockdowns, and all, all of all that uh, economic uh, you know, difficulties at the moment. Do you then see a rationale for the task at this time? No, absolutely not. You know, I mean, this is the whole thing where, I mean, unfortunately, we have a mentality amongst, I've, 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 you know, I had the opportunity of working in government. So you have this mentality when you are working in government, you always think that, look, oh, this, 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 this sector of the economy is beginning to prosper. Let's... Let's make money off them. There's always that mentality. It's sad, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've suffered that challenge myself as, as, you know, as being a regulator. But I think the, the, the whole mentality has to shift a little bit to how do I create incentives for the industry that I superintend? How do I make sure that industry is, is now on a firm footing to grow? And once that, as I said, once that growth happens, then you as the regulator of that industry can benefit from that growth, not to levy taxes on an industry which is already struggling. So many people are struggling, so many people are out of work. Um, you know, the content that's being created is just in spite of all the challenges that we have in the country. And I think the most important thing will be to, to um, and, and how this is done. I mean, if you look at whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in Europe, what the governments have done during this pandemic period is actually to put in a fund to say those who are out of work, because lots of people who work in the film industry are out of work. That, you know, it's, it's only now in the last maybe couple of weeks we're going to see uh, people go back on set. Um, so in other countries, they put a fund together to assist filmmakers, producers, directors, um, gaffers, uh, people who work behind the scene to, to, to make a living, to at least to sustain them throughout the pandemic. But here, you're actually doing the reverse. You're now levying a tax. I mean, it doesn't make sense. I, I think they will, they will probably reconsider this. Hmm. Reconsider, you say, but they've given a 30-day notice. Um, They're saying yeah. you have to register with the board within 30 days it's a, or face a, kite. a sanction. They're flying a kite. How do you think this I, bill... Because I know, this, I know how this works. Uh, um, you know, as I said, I've, had, I've, had, I've, I've been in that role before. And I've, we've, we've, you know, um, giving from my own point of view, from my own experience, we often try to fly this kite and see how the public will respond or how the stakeholders will respond. And then 
um, sort of bring them to the negotiating table and say, oh, okay, fine, maybe not 5%, maybe 2.5%, or maybe we just want to get the data. But I think they will reconsider. It doesn't make sense. Mm. So you mentioned that in other parts of the world, uh, the government right now is pulling funds together yep. to support creatives and people who are out of work. But look at what's happening here. Yep. So in your own opinion, what do you think the government can do to encourage youth, uh, the youth and content producers in Nigeria? Well, I, I think that um, there's, there's a lot of, there's good policy um, that's already in place. I think the challenge is how do you implement those good policies that are already in place. The government, um, even this administration, I, I, I find that even what the minister has done in the past, what the Minister of Information and Culture has done, some of it has been very commendable. Not, I'm not talking about the MBC, uh, but in terms of looking at what he's done in terms of addressing the issue of at least recognizing the challenges of the, of the industry, um, that's commendable. He's put in, put in place some committees that I know that are looking at that. Um, but I think that um, you know, there's one particular committee that was led by Alibaba um, you know, to look at the challenges faced by the film industry. But the, the, the sad thing about that oh, uh, is that it's, to me, some of it is just talk. Um, I think the, what they could have just done was simply to, you already have a database. You can actually walk through the people who have gone through the Film and Video Census Board and censored their movies, received the approval to know, to get that data and say, you know what, guys, we will, he did that for the broadcasting and say, waive some license fees off, gave a rebate on license fees. That's some commendable thing they've done in that, in that, in that sector. I think they can also do that for, for the struggling filmmakers. Because, you know, forget about the glamour. You see filmmakers, you know, um, all glitz and glamour. Behind the scene, a lot of people are just surviving and just trying to survive. And so I think people should not take the fact that there's, a, they perceive, there's this perception of glamour to think that there's, there's now sustenance. People are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think that the government can help. Or at least if government cannot help, government should stay out, out of the way. Mm. And I think that's really the, the key. If you ask me, in certain, in certain respects, I would say government stay out of the way, allow the young people, the creatives to create, rather than you know, putting roadblocks in front of them, as they often do. Thank you so much, uh, Emeka Mba, right here, a uh, media consultant here, helping us to analyze uh, the issue of the 5% tax uh, on uh, creatives in Nigeria.